Tijuana uh, when I crossed the border earlier earlier this year it was yeah um, this vase actually is a replica of a Mayan uh, with Mayan uh, symbols on it and um, we've got some alcohol I've had this in a long time it's made of paper mache guitars of course we think of Mexico This I thought was lovely, just made out of a board. Whoops, I lost. Oh. Okay, it's anyway, nice. there is there is one place where it fits. Here you go. We'll find it. Okay. So um I'm uh, remembering uh, this year because we they always put um, pictures of the of the deceased on the altar to remember them and to help the spirits come back. And this year I am uh, remembering um, some of these fellows. This is Tommy Rice. He was only 12 years old when he was killed by a white policeman who received a report that he was pointing a gun at people in a recreational center. Tamir reached for his gun when the policeman arrived, but it was discovered too late his gun was a replica. Michael Brown got a lot of publicity. 18 years old, stole several packs of cigarillos and shoved the clerk who, clerk who tried to stop him. His death from the gun of a white policeman set off a civil unrest in Ferguson, Missouri. Eric Garner died in Staten Island after a white New York City policeman put him in a chokehold for about 15 to 19 seconds while arresting him. He'd been accused of selling cigarettes illegally. I, used, I forgot to bring a picture of my mother on the Great Wall of China. That's oh. one of my favorite uh, photos of hers. And when I do this in my Unitarian congregation, uh, members of the congregation also put uh, uh, frame pictures of their loved ones and share some of their uh, memories. Okay. Um, the piggy bank is very uh, typically uh, Mexican. And you see, you probably recognize this famous photo. You remember this one? Mm -hmm. Taken by a, a record. Mm -hmm. uh, photographer from the record so I keep this also in memory okay these are Mexican chocolate um, oh my name was on it Mexican chocolate um, cups uh, I think they drink hot chocolate for breakfast and this one, I don't remember where I got it, but these two straw crosses, uh, last year I went through the um, Unitarian California Ministry of Justice to the border, uh, which I've always wanted to do. And we spent uh, time on both sides of the border and saw the det detainees who had been, um, I mean the Immigrants who had been uh, kicked out of the United States. Uh, we went to a uh, wall where there were family members on the U.S. side of the wall and Mexican family members on the other side of the wall, and they talked through. Even there was a church service that I went to mm -hmm. uh, there. And this picture, I didn't, I didn't see this, but I think I, this is pretty hard hitting. These are effigies of people who have tried to crawl over the wall and oh. get into the United States. Yeah. And 
while I was there, I went into a little thrift stop, shop and bought this. I just thought it was lovely. Yeah. A nun from Brazil set up a like a halfway house for the deep deportees. That's the word I want for the deportees and has um, used clothing and household items and all for, she's devoting her life to the helping the deportees. And we did talk with uh, a number of them. Some of them had been uh, vets and fought in our wars and I guess they made some mistake along the line and were kicked out of the United States. So, oh, we also f uh, went into a church and f helped to feed 800, 800 hungry or homeless people mm. um, that morning. And then again, on the street, um, there was a woman uh, in a station wagon with her two children, I think, and the whole back of the station wagon was filled with food, with plastic uh, containers for the, and the hungry, it was mostly men, not entirely mostly men, lined up all along the wall to get the chance to have that food. It was it was very emotional experience mm. to see that. Okay. Uh, this I put out in honor, uh, remembering, oh, that's not the right one. I had a little, maybe it didn't get unpacked, a little Jewish calendar to honor the estimated 6 million Jews and others that were killed during World War II. But a little, it's a little candle, and I guess it's still uh, packed away. Um, okay, this one. Uh, while a student in Mexico, I went into a um, glass blowing uh, factory, workshop, I guess. And I bought uh, probably four of these. And then a few years ago in Bergenfield, I went into a thrift stop shop and bought four more. Oh. <laughs> Can you, I couldn't believe my eyes. I have to have come from the same glass factory. I, yeah. I was just, uh, just amazed at that. This has been one of my folk art treasures uh, since 1958, uh, Guadalajara. And I remember it was up on a hill. There was a, a chapel there. And you see the, um, uh, what are they called, crutches? You see the crutches? So people had climbed up that hill and had uh, prayed for, uh, uh, to be able to walk again for the ill generally mm -hmm. speaking, so that was uh, quite an experience. Okay, oh, I remember this one. Everything has a story. On the plane flying to Mexico, 1958, as an undergraduate student, um, I sat by chance next to a woman who worked for the CIA in Mexico. Mm -hmm. And we became good friends as we bonded as the plane flew over. And she invited me for lunch to her apartment. And she sat at her table and rang her bell. And the maid came out and mm. brought lunch. I really liked that. Yeah. So I bought the little bell. Oh. <laughs> I kept ringing it. <laughs> ringing yeah. it. No maid walks out. <laughs> I remember that very well. Okay, this I bought locally, but it's really... Yummy um, uh, for uh, um, breakfast uh, cocoa with uh, oh. some spices in. You can get that uh, shop right or wherever and enjoy that. Okay, there is a story here. Okay, the Virgin of Guadalupe. Um, Virgin of Guadalupe holds a special place in the religious life of Mexico. Her image has played an important role as a national symbol of Mexico and Guatemala too. Mexican apparition of the Virgin of Mary, Virgin Mary appeared twice before Juan Diego 
an Aztec in a vision in 1531. According to the legend, she requested that a shrine to her be built on the spot where she appeared. The bishop demanded a holy sign before he would approve construction of a church. However, Mary appeared a second time to Juan Diego and ordered him to collect roses. In the second audience with uh, the bishop, Juan Diego opened his cloak, letting dozens of roses fall to the floor and revealing the image of Mary imprinted on the inside of his cloak. Oh. The image that is now venerated in the Basilica of Guadalupe, a great big uh, old church in the uh, main square of Mexico City, and a shrine to the Virgin has existed on the site since at least 1556. And I remember that people walked on their knees to, uh, to get there on a pilgrimage. The story of Mary's appearance to Juan Diego was codified in Spanish in 1648 and in the indigenous language Navarro in 1649 and widely accepted as accurate. The devotion continued to grow, especially after Our Lady of Guadalupe was credited with ending a deadly epidemic that ravaged Mexico City in 1736 to 37. And in, in 1737, she was proclaimed patroness of Mexico City. And in 1746, her patronage was accepted by all the territories of New Spain, which included present day California, as well as Mexico and regions as far south as Guatemala and El Salvador. There's an image of the Virgin of Guadalupe in uh, St. Patrick's Cathedral. And uh, one day I happened upon a procession where the Mexicans and Guatemalas carried the image uh, through the street. So that made it alive, uh, alive for me. Okay, and we also have Katrina. I'd like to introduce Katrina. And you will see uh, more images of uh, people dressed as Katrina in Mexico for the festival. In the early 1900s, a famous Mexican printmaker, Posada, created the image of a female skeleton wearing only a hat. A hat like the upper class European women wore at that time, before the 1910 revolution in Mexico. She became a satirical figure depicting those Mexicans who, ashamed of their Indian origins, wore white makeup and tried to pass as Europeans, imitated the life of the French. So Posada drew this image to poke fun at death itself. He took the inspiration from the image of the Aztec god of death. When dead, everyone's equal. Many Mexican women dress up as Katrina when they participate in the Day of the Dead festivals, festivities, and her figure is ever present in Day of the Dead decorations, which you will see when I show you more images. Okay, and this is, this one I got um, in last summer in Tijuana. Um, no, I got it in Bogota, Colombia. I bought it in Bogota, Colombia uh, last January. And um, it's also for the children, for the little children, an image of um, Guadalupe. Is there anything on the altar? Any questions? No. Okay. 